For many people in Naples and Pozzuoli, today's message sounds reassuring. No eruption, no ash, just a few small tremors. It feels as if the crisis has finally calmed down. But this is where it really matters. Because in the last 24 hours, the instruments tell a different story. According to daily earthquake reports, about 17 tiny quakes have shaken the Campi Flagre area in just one day, all between roughly magnitude 0.1 and 1.9. The day before, there were 19 more. Most of them are too weak to feel while you drink your morning coffee. The lamp above the table does not move. The dishes stay on the shelf. Life looks normal, but underneath the caldera is still ticking. To understand why that matters, you have to remember the backdrop. Since 2005, the ground in parts of Pozzuoli has risen by roughly one and a half meters. That is about the height of a kitchen counter pushed slowly upward by pressure from below. At times, the uplift has jumped to more than three centimeters per month. On top of that, the last two years have already brought several stronger quakes around magnitude 4.4. Those were powerful enough to crack walls, knock small objects to the floor, and force the government to declare a state of emergency for this area. Today's swarm of tiny shocks is not a disaster by itself. It is one more line in a long growing file. And this is the part of that really matters. Officially, Campi Flagre is still on yellow alert. Scientists say there is no eruption in progress. Ash advisory centers report no volcanic ash from this caldera or for aircraft to avoid. Weekly activity summaries do not list it as erupting at the surface. At the same time, new studies point to an underground ring of faults that focuses stress beneath the bay, and other research suggests that hot pressurized water in a deep geothermal system is helping to lift the ground. In other words, the pot has not boiled over, but the heat under the lid has not been turned off. So what does a day like this really mean for someone living on the fifth floor in Pozzuoli or running a shop in western Naples? Is this just harmless background noise? or another small step in a long crisis that has already lasted for years. In the next part of this video, we will break down what these small earthquakes actually tell scientists, how they separate normal unrest from early warning signs, and why a long chain of minor tremors can still change the risk for people who live directly on top of this restless caldera. On paper, 17 earthquakes between magnitude 0.1 and 1.9 sound harmless. They do not crack walls, they do not send people running outside, most people never feel them at all. And here's the important part. Exactly because you cannot feel them, it is easy to ignore what they say. For scientists, these small quakes are a heart monitor for the caldera. Each one marks a tiny fracture in the rock, a small adjustment as the ground continues to rise and bend. One or two events can be random noise. 17 in a day, after 19 the day before on top of months of unrest, start to draw a pattern. It is the pattern that matters. The pattern tells scientists that the system beneath Campi Flegre is still under pressure. Not exploding, not relaxing, still loaded. Think about the uplift we talked about in part one. Since 2005, the ground in parts of Pozzuoli has risen by about one and a half meters. You do not notice that change from week to week. But buildings do. Old foundations do. Every few centimeters of extra lift adds a little more stress. The tiny earthquakes are how that stress is released step by step. When they cluster around the bay or along the edges of the caldera, they line up with the same ring of hidden faults that new studies have mapped at depth. The shaking you do not feel is often the shaking that reveals where the system is weakest. At the same time, scientists cannot treat every busy day as a red alert, so they compare each swarm with months and years of data. Is the number of quakes jumping far above recent levels or staying inside the usual band for this crisis? Are the events moving shallower toward the surface or holding at similar depths? Are the strongest shocks creeping back toward the magnitudes that cracked walls in 2024 and 2025 or staying well below that line? Only when several of those signals change together does the picture shift from background unrest toward possible escalation. For someone living in the area, that difference is hard to see. A seismologist sees thousands of colored dots on a screen. A resident sees a new hairline crack above a window or hears neighbors trading stories about another night of poor sleep after a stronger shock. The science says no eruption now, but the feeling of living on a loaded system does not go away. In the next part of this video, we will go deeper into that system itself, how magma at depth hot pressurized water and a hidden ring of faults work together to lift the ground 
and why officials still judge the chance of a sudden large eruption as low while keeping Campi Flagre under a formal state of emergency. When most people hear a volcanic unrest, they imagine magma rising straight toward the surface, a red column pushing up ready to break through. At Campi Flagre today, the reality is more complicated. According to Italy's civil protection and research teams, there is magma at depth feeding this long crisis. But there is no clear sign that a fresh batch is racing into the shallow rock just beneath Pozzuoli. The system is not quiet. It is not about to erupt without warning. It sits in an uneasy middle ground. One of the main drivers of that unrest is hot pressurized water. Deep below the bay in the town, natural groundwater is heated by the underlying magma body. As that water warms and turns to steam, it expands and pushes on the rock above. Some recent studies from 2025 suggest that a large part of the uplift we see at the surface can be explained by this overpressured hydrothermal system, not by a solid block of rising magma alone. In simple terms, the caldera floor is being lifted by a mixture of heat and fluid, like a giant, very slow motion car jack. That is why the ground can keep rising and the earthquakes can keep coming even when no lava is visible at the surface. At the same time, advanced earthquake analysis and artificial intelligence have revealed something else under Campi Flagre, a buried ring of faults. Stress is not spread evenly under the whole area. It seems to concentrate along a circular zone beneath and around the caldera. That is where many of the recent earthquakes line up, including at least five events above magnitude 4 recorded in 2025. In practice, this ring behaves like a fragile frame around a loaded structure. As pressure from magma and hot water builds below the frame, takes most of the bending and stretching. When it can no longer take the strain, it slips in small steps. Each step shows up on the seismograms as another quake. The important question is simple. What happens if that frame weakens further? And this is where it becomes important for understanding risk. A system driven by both magma and hot water acting on a pre-existing ring of faults can stay restless for a long time. It can generate swarms of small earthquakes and continued uplift without immediately tipping into a major eruption. That is why Italy's National Risk Council keeps Campi Flagre at yellow alert. The data say the system is pressurized and evolving. They do not yet show the clear rapid signals that usually mark magma forcing its way through the last few kilometers of rock. For now, the main short-term hazard remains shaking earthquakes strong enough to damage older buildings and frighten residents, not yet ash columns and lava flows. For people who live here, that mix of forces is hard to picture. You cannot see the magma body. You cannot see the hot water pressing on the rock. You cannot see the buried ring of faults. What you do see are new cracks in plaster, fresh scaffolding around aging houses and another headline about a swarm overnight. In the next part of this video, we will bring these deep processes back to street level. We will look at what yellow alert really means for daily life in Naples and Pozzuoli, how authorities want people to prepare, and why calm, steady readiness is more realistic than either panic or pretending that nothing is happening. For many people in Naples and Pozzuoli, yellow alert sounds almost harmless. It is not green, but it is not red either. So the temptation is strong to treat it like background noise. You go to work, you send the kids to school, you hope the next strong quake never comes. But that is not the whole story, because yellow in a place like Campi Flagre means something very specific about how you live your daily life. According to Italy's civil protection, yellow alert means heightened monitoring and a recognized phase of unrest. Scientists are tracking uplift earthquakes and gas around the clock. Local officials review evacuation plans, check meeting points, and update maps of the most fragile buildings and streets. Sirens, loudspeakers, and phone alert systems are tested sometimes quietly, sometimes in public drills. On paper, nothing dramatic is happening. In practice, an entire region is learning how to live with a volcano that does this not erupt but does not sleep either. And this is where it really matters. The decisions you make on a calm day decide how safe you are on a bad one. At the level of a single home readiness looks simple, almost boring. Heavy shelves and cabinets are fixed to the wall so they will not topple during a stronger shock. Glass doors are secured. A small flashlight and a radio sit in a place everyone in the family can find in the dark. Important documents are kept together, not scattered in different drawers. 
Some families in Pacholi keep a small bag near the door with medicine, a bottle of water, and a copy of their ID. Not because an evacuation is expected tomorrow, but because leaving in 10 minutes is easier if you have already thought about what to grab. None of this stops the ground from moving, but it does turn fear into action and action into habit. On the streets, yellow alert is visible in small signs if you know where to look. Evacuation routes are marked a little more clearly. Some schools practice where to gather if a strong quake hits during class. Older buildings are wrapped in scaffolding while engineers add supports or check for hidden damage from past shocks. Shop owners notice which parts of the ceiling creak when tremor rises. Bus drivers know which tunnels and overpasses might be closed first after a bigger event. It is not the constant drama of a movie about disaster. It is a slow, steady adjustment of an entire city to the idea that the ground under it is not fixed. There is also a quieter risk exhaustion and rumors. After months or years of unrest, people get tired of alerts and headlines. Social media fills the gap with dramatic videos, old footage reposted as if it were new, and claims that an eruption is coming tomorrow without any scientific backing. That is why authorities keep repeating the same message traced official sources, not anonymous clips. Follow Civil Protection, the Vesuvius Observatory, and local councils for updates. Listen for changes in the alert level, not every loud voice online. It is a message that may sound dull compared to viral rumors, but in a long crisis, calm and consistent information is as important as seismometers and gas sensors. In the final part of this video, we will zoom out from today's yellow alert and ask a harder question. How long can a crisis like this last? What realistic scenarios do scientists see for the next few years? And what can the rest of the world learn from the way people in Campi Flegre are trying to live with a restless caldera without losing either their homes or their peace of mind. On a calm day like this, it is easy to feel relieved. No ash cloud, no eruption, only small earthquakes that most people never feel. But this is where it really matters because the most important choices are often made on days that look normal. From a scientific point of view, Campi Flegrei does not have one fixed future. It has a range of scenarios. The first is the one we are living right now. The ground keeps rising slowly. Swarms of small earthquakes continue. Every few months, a stronger shock rattles windows and nerves, but daily life goes on. In this path, the main risks are fatigue and hidden damage. Old buildings weaken little by little. People get tired of alerts. The crisis does not explode, but it does not end either. A second scenario is a change in style without a large, long-lasting eruption. That could mean stronger shallow quakes along the same buried ring of faults, or small local steam-driven blasts if hot water and gas suddenly find an open crack. Damage in that case would be sharp and very local, but serious for anyone in the wrong place at the wrong time. Certain streets could be closed. Parts of the caldera might be fenced off. Short episodes of ash or steam could appear in the news. It would not be a repeat of the biggest historic eruptions, but it would still test how ready home schools and hospitals really are. The most serious scenario is the one everyone fears, and scientists treat with great caution, a new magmatic eruption. To move toward that path, the system would need to send much clearer signals than we see today. Stronger and more frequent quakes, faster uplift, changes in gas chemistry and temperature, new thermal anomalies in specific zones. Those signals are not present right now. That is why official assessments still describe the probability of an immediate large eruption as low, even while the state of emergency remains in place. The goal of all the monitoring is simple. If the system starts to shift toward that more dangerous track, it should shout in the data before it breaks the surface. And this is where Campi Flegre becomes a lesson for the rest of the world. It is not only a local Italian story, it is a live example of how modern cities live with slow building hazards a restless caldera under a dense urban area, a crisis that has lasted for years, a population that has to balance jobs, schools, and mortgages against evacuation maps and risk zones. The way Italy handles this, the way scientists explain it uncertainty, and the way residents prepare without panicking will be watched by every other region built near an active volcano or a major fault. If you are watching this from the United States, from Germany, from the UK, from Canada, or anywhere else, the takeaway is not to fear every headline. It is to understand what the data really say 
on a day like today. No eruption, no ash advisory, around 17 tiny quakes in 24 hours. A ground that has already risen by about one and a half meters. A system that remains loaded, but also under constant watch. The more we learn about how this caldera breathes, the better prepared we are, not just here in Campi Flagre, but wherever the next long volcanic crisis begins. If you want to keep following stories like this one, consider subscribing to this channel and turning on notifications. And tell us in the comments as calmly and honestly as you can. If you lived in Pozzuoli today, would you stay, would you leave, or would you quietly adapt your life to the rhythm of the caldera beneath your feet?